Well, today is trail day. Water, bear spray, raincoat, a little food, some first aid items, and of course, a camera. Very basic though. A little cloudy. Should still be a nice day. A little cooler. That's great. In my last two videos, most of the attention was on my trailer and campsite. This one is just about a simple walk in the woods. Although most of the trail was level and well-groomed, a combination of a spring runoff and recent rainstorms had made the stream crossings more of a challenge. In this particular case, the trail disappeared and my only option for a dry crossing was this fallen tree. Although I usually filter my water, I could not resist a clear ice cold mountain stream. On the other bank was an American Dipper. Actually two, doing a cool little dance. Watch the one on the left as she dives looking for insects. It was a mother feeding her child. Then do the happy dance. The deeper I went into the forest, the greener the flora. And pretty soon it was only the narrow brown strip of soil that clashed with the sea of green. But I left the trail on a whim, to bushwhack my way to a distant patch of light.
My reward was a glimpse at the source of my last crossing, a cascading ribbon that captured melting snow from a high mountain and sent it tumbling down its rocks. It's got real dark. I don't think I'm going to be able to go too far on this because uh, it's probably going to be a thunderstorm. But I'll go a little farther, but I know when to quit. I hear a stream coming up. So the question was, could I risk fording this stream? No. I just wasn't prepared enough. Although it looked easy, my concern was downstream, where it was far more turbulent. This is where I'd end up if I tripped. And it just didn't seem worth it. Just a few glimpses of color and the soothing scent of the forest was all I was really looking for. Well, it's starting to rain. There's actually thunder and lightning. I got to get out of here and I still have to cross that uh, tree to get across the stream. But I'm going to do it live this time. No setting up. Here I go. I did it, and I'm starting to get soaking wet. Better start hiking. This little fellow didn't mind the rain at all and kind of seemed mesmerized by it. Upon returning, I had two things on my mind. The second was food, and near the trailhead was lots of it. These are stinging nettles. I grabbed my work gloves and bag from the Jeep and did a little foraging for later. I wish I'd covered my left arm, though.
Due to so many comments by my viewers, I thought I'd point out what I thought was obvious. Provincial parks do have restrooms. Although you can bring a toilet, if you plan well, you'll rarely need to use it. This iridescent jewel was actually a hitchhiker who landed on my shoulder. Although I couldn't identify the species, he was kind of cute in his own way. Sure hope he can fly. Well, it's chow time in the trailer, and it's going to be one of those slim potato head creations because I don't plan anything. It's whatever I have in the cupboard, whatever is convenient, whatever I can forage. And tonight I have two pots of water, all already boiled. And to go with those pots of water is one of my favorites, minute rice. It's actually five minute rice, but they call it minute rice and it's gluten free rice. And to balance that out, I have gluten, braised gluten tidbits, uh, tasty little things, lots of salt, 16 grams of protein. This is my carbs and we have the stinging nettles that I picked today. And by the way, they really do sting. You know, I've had this tingling sensation down my arm all day, so you gotta be really careful with those. But let me show you how you prepare that. Everybody knows how to prepare minute rice, but it's the nettles that's the important part. And what I have to do is cut up the leaves. It's mostly the end bits that are the best. I'm not gonna eat that. You know, I've got enough of them here that I can be fussy, but I'm gonna keep the ends. And the whole concept is you boil the nettles and the tiny little bristles that actually sting you, they, they fall off when they get boiled. I wouldn't wanna be putting the bristles with the rice. That's why I'm cooking it separately. Let's get enough in there. Okay. I think that should be enough. It only takes a couple of minutes to cook the nettles. And if you're not sure what nettles look like, don't pick them and don't cook them. Butter and salt are optional. Well, we're ready to roll. Start with the rice. And I use that, that uh, juice as the sauce. Don't need salt. Then I could use some onion powder, why not? There we go. For the nettles. They just go on top. It's a bit of a garnish. And yes, I'll be eating it out on the porch. It's like spinach. Tons of mosquitoes. Look at the mosquito spray. Can't enjoy a meal. I'm being attacked. My last night was not much of a finale. I just checked the skies to see if any night shots were possible and set up the camera.
This is the entire night from dusk till dawn. I was up at 5.30 to make coffee. a good camp out in the woods. I was out for over a week. Got to try some things, make sure they're working. It was really just a test for something I hope I have on the horizon, which is a longer trip. One that's going to be a little bit more challenging. But being that I just got a different trailer this year, I had to try it out in a remote area for an extended period and everything did go well which is good I don't want any surprises especially if I'm in the middle of nowhere one more thing I need to check on however are my trailer brakes well surprisingly enough I actually got better mileage than with my A-frame I'm just getting at half a tank and I'm at 210 kilometers. I'll do a little calculation and I'll put it up here. I'm now getting 15.2 miles per gallon or six and a half kilometers per liter. That's much better than the 13.5 miles per gallon last recorded with the A-frame. So I'm pretty amazed that despite having a taller trailer, uh, a big solar panel and big mud flaps, I actually got better gas mileage than I got with my A-frame. I think a lot of people say that there's so much wind resistance in a fiberglass trailer. Well, it's not true. Um, I added wind resistance. I must have, especially with the mud flaps and, uh, and the solar panel. However, it gets better gas mileage than uh, what I was driving before. Who knew? Good news! So I think a small egg camper and a Jeep make a perfect combination for backwoods camping. It's sure to be something I will fine tune in the months ahead. I hope you enjoyed this video and please check out my others as well.